ESPN presents the 1976 Final Four featuring the Indiana Hoosiers, the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, the Michigan Wolverines, and the UCLA Bruins. Welcome again, I'm Bob Lee. Our country celebrated its 200th birthday in 76, and the Final Four convened where it all began, Philadelphia. The starters on an undefeated Indiana team coming in. The starters were legend Kent Benson, Quinn Buckner, Bobby Wilkerson, Tom Abernathy, and Scott May. Bob Knight would later say his 75 team was even better, but this team, 76, was in Philly undefeated in the first season in memory that John Wooden was a spectator and not coaching. We'll go to Philly in 76 right after this. Tough defense is a trademark of Bobby Knight's teams. According to one of Knight's coaching friends, Defense is where Indiana hangs its hat. It's an aggressive, knowledgeable defense, with one man playing the ball, the other four helping him out. The Hoosiers are equally as disciplined on offense. Indiana makes very few mistakes. Watch here, as Indiana patiently works the ball around with less than one minute to play. Constantly looking for the good shot. And patience pays off. Tom Abernathy is fouled. A big play. And Coach Bobby Knight tells why. At this point, with about 25 seconds to go in the ball game, Tommy Abernathy was fouled and stepped to the free throw line and made both free throws, which gave us a five-point lead and 25 seconds to play. Abernathy's foul shots were crucial, all right. During a timeout, Marquette coach Al McGuire argued with the officials so vehemently that he was charged with a technical foul, his second of the game, and it proved to be costly for Indiana now had possession of the ball, and all they had to do was to freeze it. Only a few ticks remained on the clock. Indiana had beaten Marquette in the championship game of the Mideast Regional. And coming up the final basket of the game, Quinn Buckner driving in for the layup. And after he made it, he raced over and embraced Bobby Knight, obviously pleased with the outcome. I don't think I have ever been as happy after a ball game for a group of players as I was at that particular moment because here is a group that had worked through at that point something like uh, 63 ball games in a row trying to get to a point where they could play for the national championship. That was a goal of ours a year ago and we weren't able to get to the finals this year. It was a, a goal, even maybe a stronger goal than we had a year ago and, and finally all of the waiting and all of the work was over with and we were able to, to know for sure that we were going to be able to go on to Philadelphia and have a crack at the national championship. On to the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, host of the NCAA championship tournament in this, the bicentennial year. To get to the final four, Indiana had beaten three of the nation's best teams in the regionals, St. John's, Alabama, and Marquette. Next up for the Hoosiers, UCLA, the defending champions and winners of 10 of the last 12 NCAA championship tournaments. Indiana and UCLA had met in the season opener. Indiana won that one easily by 20 points. Bobby Knight knew that the Bruins were much improved this time around. We had played UCLA in the opening ball game of the season in St. Louis, and a lot of people felt that here's a great advantage for UCLA going into a second match with Indiana, Indiana having won the first game rather easily, but we felt that all along during the course of the season, we were trying to play to potential rather than play against a particular opponent. And I think this was the focal point for our players going into the UCLA game, as I think was evidenced by their intensity and in preparing for the ball game all week long, the way they approached the game and pregame warm up, the way they, they went about the introductions. The, I just had a, a sense of sitting on the bench thinking that, that it made little difference that we had played this team earlier in the year or any other team as far as that was concerned. I think that our players had put so much into the season and that they really weren't happy to be in Philadelphia just to be a part of the Final Four. They, they weren't just pleased with themselves that they had won the Big Ten Championship. What they were after was a shot at the, at the final game. The game started out with both teams going at one another pretty hard defensively and I think that game settled down very early not to be a game of offensive thrusts and, and a lot of scoring. Bobby is right. It was a game of tough defense, like this key matchup between number 54, Kent Benson, and UCLA's number 31, Richard Washington, the outstanding player of last year's tournament. Washington is an extremely good all-around basketball player and definitely one of the better outside shooters for a person of his size that I've ever seen in college basketball. We felt that it would be important 
to play Kent Benson on Washington for two reasons. Number one, he had the muscle and the bulk to fight Washington inside and the size to make it difficult for Washington to shoot over him outside. My defensive assignment was on Richard Washington. Uh, Richard is a very quick and very good shooter from outside. And my assignment was to stop him from getting the ball. And once he did get the ball, make sure he didn't go around me. And I, I got excited and wanted to, to play him. And, and I played him too tight, uh, close, too close to him. And Richard is very quick, and he made some quick moves and went right around me. And in the process, I trying to stop Richard I reached uh, in to get the ball and knock it away, and uh, I got myself in foul trouble. And so with Ken Benson in foul trouble, Bobby Knight called on Tom Abernathy. After Kent's two fouls, the thing I had to do when I guarded Richard Washington was to try to put as much pressure as I could. And, you know, he's about four inches taller than I am, so if he got it inside, I'd just have to hope that he'd miss. Three inches shorter than Washington, Abernathy was accustomed to this kind of a challenge. During the season, number 33 usually guarded the opponent's best forward. Tom's a six foot seven senior from South Bend, Indiana, and what a job he did on Washington. He did not allow the sharp shooting UCLA forward any room at all. Against Benson, Washington had scored five points in the opening two minutes of the game. Abernathy didn't allow Washington to score for the next 26 minutes, or putting it another way, not until there were 13 minutes left to go in the game. Abernathy also found time to do a few other things. He rebounded. He passed off. And he also scored himself, finishing with 10 points to lead all scorers at halftime. Another key Indiana performer against UCLA during the first half was number 42, Scott May. Scott poured in four important baskets near the halfway mark of the first half. Just look at the skill of this 6-7 consensus All-American. Bobby Knight says May is the best player he's ever coached. He says it comes from hard work, sheer hard work. That's why he's so good. Scotty can do it all. Indiana led at halftime, 34-26. <laughs>